Hi, I'm Rick. Hi, I'm Gilliam. Gilliam, uh, last time we looked at Angular schematics and a general overview. So today we're going to do a deeper dive into schematics, right? Correct. Um, today is about optimizing workflow with schematics. So really uh, starting up projects, their time uh, to be more time efficient, really generate all those end-to-end -end testing, uh, unit testing mm -hmm. projects, my build scripts for my DevOps, just scaffold it for me. I don't All of it. it? All of it, all of it. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. curious. My goal is to uh, <laughs> drink a cup of coffee and, and have the machine command. do stuff. Yeah. And then use stuff like uh, GitHub code pilot to do the rest of the coding and then you're just, you're done, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I should try to make a schematic to code for me, but that's maybe... Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's too, not too. go there. This is pretty, pretty cool enough. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's yes. dive in. Yes, I've prepared uh, on my laptop a project, uh, Angular Schematics, to optimize your workflow. Um, I've two schematics, mm -hmm. workspace and feature. I'm going to show you the uh, workspace. Uh, schematic. So uh, I, I assume you're already as familiar with this schematic uh, collection and the schematics uh, description factory function and the schema. So if you're not, go have a look at our previous video. It's an introduction to schematics and that will get you up to date on where we are right now. Thank you. Correct. Um, and let's just dive into code. The most fun part about schematics is code. The most fun part of everything is code, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's 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 fine. That's correct. Um, my workspace schematic is starting with a factory function called workspace because okay. I want to have my consumers from my development team to just hey, I want to start a new project. Give me the schematic workspace and. When they have uh, run the workspace schematic, they can just start coding with business logic, with the yeah the, the money stuff. This is all about boilerplate, getting things done, uh, the tedious tasks when starting your project. And. Uh, the workspace is quite simple uh, when you take a look at the options because the only option I am uh, requiring for our consumers is a name. Yeah. What's the name of your new application? So this is this option name and I, I'm throwing a schematics exception uh, if it's not uh, given. And to, to, you should really throw schematic exceptions so the Angular CLI will understand something is uh, clearly wrong and um, will give a nice error to your consumers. And it's a chain of four rules. And these rules are going to mutate this tree. First of all, I have uh, agreed on a architecture to remove this default source folder. I'm going to zoom a little bit for my code and it's just removing this source folder because this schematic should run in a Angular workspace. Mm -hmm. You want to run through Angular CLI, your, the ng generate and then my schematics project and the schematic because you're going to have all the utilities of this schematic run. You can have some X prompt. Mm -hmm. This X prompt is for feedback or giving options. When you're uh, making a project with NGNU, you get the opportunity to choose for your uh, predecessor for CSS. So that's a possibility. Okay. And those only work through the Angular CLI in an Angular workspace. So I'm assuming this is gonna execute in a workspace already an ng plane new and this source file maybe exists so yeah. i'm gonna so if it does let's get it out of there correct cool because the second one is the update package config this is uh, quite powerful it's, um, 
is updating your package JSON. And I'm gonna mutate this package JSON file of your existing project to add dependencies, mm -hmm. add scripts, okay. and uh, dev development dependencies. Um, <clears throat> and maybe some other versioning or names, etc. And then if I look over there, I can see that there's a logger where you actually say, so I, add a, I have added this to the script. Does mm -hmm. that mean that that then is displayed on the command line interface so that you can see what is happening when you run the schematic? Correct. Okay. So I'm telling the consumer through this context logger what's happening uh, runtime. And it's just a loop of dependencies. These dependencies are over here. And to give you a ID about them is a constant array with a name and the version I'm going to use. Okay. So when I'm updating my workspace dependencies, I will uh, bump this version. And dev dependencies is also a array of named and versions. And my schematic function is responsible for find this script yep. tag in my package.json and gonna add on this location. So this is really a example of abstract syntax tree finding this location in this file and yeah, because if you have to do that manually or code that manually, it's going to be a bit more time than just saying, hey, insert this for me. Yes, and it's all possible. You could think I'm going to use some regex, but those are brittle. And yes. you don't want to start with those. And a Angular a schematic has uh, the utility, has the syntax for you. So go use. Um, and the same trick is done for the scripts part in your mm -hmm. package JSON. Um, another rule <coughs> is to install package.json dependencies. I'm going to give a task to this context to npm install. And that's where the chain is important. When I'm taking a look at this chain, I'm doing it after I have updated this package.json. So these yeah. dependencies are available. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, you'll have all of these packages in package.json, but won't have them installed, and then you'll have to run npm install again. Correct. And wow, that's tedious. So, um, and lastly, the create beta talks workspace. So this example is, is going to show you mutating existing files and adding files. Okay. Or well, this is a deep dive in this template apply template functions. This apply template functions is a utility from the Angular guys somewhere over here, dev kit for the schematics, and you can give it context. I have shown I am going to use classify, dasherize, camelize of the string utilities. These utilities, well, it's all in the name. So when it's a, a string with uh, lower cases, and yeah. I'm going to tell it to classify, it's going to be Pascal cased. I'm going to tell it to dasherize, it should uh, add dashes where the capital letters are. Yeah. And the camelize, it's starting with the lowercase. Okay. It's gonna add the camelize. And my variable name. And in my files, you will see the new code, the new workspace structure of my application. So my Angular JSON, I'm gonna replace. And you will see this dasherize functions all over the place. Okay. Uh, to really tell this template engine, the result will be the name given. So if I say my app, it will my dash app uh, okay. add to your project. Yep. And this is just repeating the same trick, but it's a really powerful trick. Just so dash rise, classify, camelize, great utilities. I have added in the example in the GitHub. Uh, a possibility to configure your registry. If you use an artifactory to publish your private packages, yep. you could also add that by schematic, your linting, and eventually I some applications. You will see name at dasherize, so the dasherized name will be the result of this folder, and Cypress to end to end my application. So the goal, I'm going to execute this. Uh, workspace schematic and I've not 
wasted time in adding Cypress, adding to ASLint, adding some projects, adding this code architecture. For demo purposes, I'm gonna use npm pack. Uh, you could use npm uh, link, yeah. but I'm gonna use npm pack because I wanna simulate the same behavior as a published package. So this is this package file will most likely be hosted on your Artifactory. And I have, got, have my sandbox. My sandbox is just a plain new Angular application. And let's go to my sandbox. And I'm going to say npm install and you can install a local package like this and it's going to behave the same way. So this is helpful for trying out your package before actually publishing yeah, it. Yeah, that is kind of a end-to-end uh, -end test what I'm doing. Okay, was this a successful install? Yeah, we got a local file. So yep. uh, in the real world, you would say not this uh, package file, but you're gonna use the name of the package. So you're gonna use bad docs dash schematics. Yep. Over here. But now I've done it this way. So it's gonna behave exactly like. So in the node modules of my sandbox, this package is installed. And now I am in a Angular workspace environment, so I can use this Angular generate um, command command yeah. to uh, yeah to to uh, to reach my beta talks um, schematic project and this is done by telling I want to generate I want to generate from beta talks dash schematics because yeah. that's the name of my colon and what I want to do I'm going to say I want to do workspace and. This is yeah. So this the is the example. Yeah, the, the good thing that actually CLI now tells you, based on what you have in your schematic, hey, I'm not going to be able to run this because you haven't provided this parameter for me. Correct. So I am required to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name, my app, and it's going to do its magic. And the only thing I did to create this sandbox example is ng new to get a Angular workspace environment, yeah. to be in this climate, this, this uh, uh, context of an Angular CLI, and run my schematic. And this schematic will be hosted on a Artifactory. Yeah. So just for, uh, while uh, the packages are installing, just for a general feel of how much time does it take to, to actually build a schematic, is this something that you can do in days or weeks to have a meaningful schematic up and running? The approach I like to use is uh, do it one time by hand. So you're gonna make an ng new and an ng projects, uh, add some libraries, uh, add Cypress, and then reverse engineer it to a schematic. Yeah. That way I find it's about one, two days okay. max. Yeah, Try on error. If you have the general idea of how schematics work. Correct. Okay. Correct. If you're familiar with it, then it's gonna uh, be a lot faster, especially this one seems impressive, but it's kind of a smart way to use uh, static files. Okay. Most of the scaffolded uh, logic, uh, files are static files. And I've saved a lot of time to make my test scripts, all these test scripts, watch scripts, build scripts, they're all done. I don't have to think about it. I don't want to think about my dependencies. They are just there. And I can end-to-end -end test my application um, in my projects. End-to-end -end test my application. This, this is the application with my Cypress and my libraries, common and utils. A funny thing I am seeing is a little bug. So I hope I will fix it in my GitHub for you guys is the source folder is not removed. That's uh, silly, but you could just delete. 
So this should be the end result. Okay. This is all about workspace and another I have made is uh, the feature. And uh, just, I'm not, if you want to see the implementation of the feature, check out the GitHub. Um, let's say my feature is docs. And this is all about reusability. So this is a smart way to reuse Angular's schematics. So under the hood, it will use ng-generate module, ng-generate mm -hmm. component, ng-generate component, ng-generate service. So it's not uh, my schematic, it's just a, a well, kind it's, of it's, facade. Uh, it is your schematic, but you just uh, uh, combine several existing schematics into a new one where you say, okay, so if anybody wants to run this schematic, I would need to have two components, a module, and a uh, service. Correct. And so okay. we have our docs module added, our feature module, our component, our docs header, sidebar, routing, go, uh, go crazy. Uh, but this is gonna give you our overall ID. So scaffolding, workspace, and scaffolding features. Cool. Without a lot of time. Yeah. It's, it's impressive how uh, fast you can build stuff if you get the hang of how schematics works. Yes, yes, correct. But then there's also room for improvement, right? For even further optimizing what you're doing. Yes, yes. And then if you're interested in that, have a look at part three. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.